Okay, now ANSYS has, um, knows what's a mathematical model it needs to solve. It knows that it has to solve the 3D equilibrium equations. Um, it has the boundary conditions here, and it also knows it needs to uh, use additional relations, the Hooke's law and the strain displacement relationship. And the constants appearing in the Hooke's law have been assigned via material properties. Um, and it also, so it knows the mathematical model, and then it also knows from the mesh at what locations, i.e. at what nodes, it needs to obtain the displacements. So let's make it do that. Uh, highlight solution in the tree and click solve. So ANSYS will go through, construct the element stiffness matrices, the global stiffness matrix inverted, and obtains the nodal displacements. So now what does ANSYS have? If I go to the mesh and zoom in, so let me pin this. And if I zoom in here, okay, so let me look at um, a view like that. And so it has the displacements at the nodes. And by default, in most cases, ANSYS puts the, um, the mid-side nodes too to get a higher order uh, interpolation accuracy. So it has the, the nodal displacements at these locations also. Um, and if you look, if you go back to mesh and look at the statistics, so we have, you know, 13,000, around 13,000 nodes. So three times that number is the number of displacements. And some of those displacements are known from the displacement um, constraints. The other um, values of the nodal displacements it's obtained now. So it has all the nodal displacements. And everything else we look at is going to be constructed from these nodal displacements. Um, and that's an important point to keep in mind. So I'll go back, I'll say fit to view, and I will save the project.